Good morning internet, look at the wild turkeys. It's six o'clock in the morning today and uh, last night we made it to Nelson. Today I'm heading back towards Calgary. It will be the last day of our trip or our ride. Uh, but first thing what I have to do is stop for a coffee. Then I woke up, sneak out of the house, and uh, my friends, they still stayed uh, with Chris. He lives in a beautiful place, uh, just uh, on the outskirts of Nelson, British Columbia. And uh, he's got about 13 acres of property, and it's uh, really like a like retreat home. So the, he's retired, so uh, he, can, he can do that, because uh, as you see, Whatever we're heading through here, it's uh, very isolated. Ooh, the sun is still low, blinding me, even with the shield. Just getting into Nelson. Gonna stop, as I mentioned, grab some gas and coffee. Wow, what a difference. I just filled up. I'm still waiting for coffee. I like I didn't want it to wait for anything to open in Nelson. Everything is still closed pretty much in that little town. So I decided to start heading back uh, out east uh, towards Calgary. Um, yeah, it is uh, quite chilly in the morning. Uh, I can't believe it. Only a couple hundred kilometers difference from um, the south of the border. And here uh, it is already 8.40 and uh, the temperature is only 17 degrees. So. But anyways, right now I'm heading towards Salmo, that's British Columbia. Uh, yeah, the speed limits here are just ridiculous, 90 kilometers per hour. And I believe I'm gonna run into some construction as well. My plan is to get uh, to Calgary before 4 p.m. So I have uh, quite a bit to drive uh, because it is 577 kilometers exactly from where I am right now. So I do have a little bit to ride. The reason why uh, I want to pick up my truck from the dealership, I left it for service before I left on this uh, motorcycle trip. And at the same time later on, my wife is flying back to Calgary as well from States. So I would like to be able to pick her up and my daughter. I'll show you a little bit more of British Columbia, even though I did the road here before, but probably maybe not everybody watched the previous videos. It is also a beautiful country and land. A lot of spectacular mountains. So I'm hoping uh, that I'm going to be able to hit some kind of a Tim Horton down in Salmo. If they have any, I don't know but I'll find out and then I'll carry I believe towards Cranbrook so I'm back on highway 3 and there was no coffee here in Salmo there should be one in Creston let's see how many more kilometers we have to Creston I'll quickly stop for a coffee there. So first on 84 kilometer, that's not too bad, that's uh, about an hour ride. 
and the speed limit on this road is 100 versus 90 on the other one. What a spectacular view. Sam is rising just on side here. approaching Creston over the river and got into a valley beautiful morning beautiful Creston is so close to US border it's only 12 kilometers south from here so if I wouldn't go to um, Nelson last night, I would probably cross around here. Uh, th th there would be a little bit bigger cat across the state, state of uh, Washington. Here on my left, there is a Moya Lake. It's also a beautiful lake. Uh, there's a camping available. Perfect place to get out and spend a couple of days. I drove by this lake a few, quite a few times. It's a spectacular mountain lake. You can go boating and so on. And just up ahead, there's a town of Moya as well. So blocking my way to get around them, but well, what you can do. Welcome to Canada, one lane highway. This guy here found a camp spot just along the railway. I guess that will do. But the trains are here off, uh, going very often, so I don't think that's a peaceful camping. So, from this point I have uh, 32 kilometers to Cranbrook and uh, I will have to fill up again over there. Oh, I don't have to, I could try to go to Fernie, but I don't like to take the chances, especially that I damped uh, and packed my fuel bladder. While I was in Creston, I, I also had the car wash and I washed the bike from all that BDR dirt that I've been carrying around through a few states and all my saddlebags, so I'm gonna have to unpack it all. I don't want it to be covered with all that thick layer of dust. It is uh, 34 degrees right now. I have a 336 kilometers to go. That isn't much further, but with this highway, it takes a while because you got trucks, you got everything, uh, campers, uh, tourists, you name it, you got it. You can't even go 100 uh, in some cases like this, where the other vehicles are blocking traffic and they don't care to pull off the side to let you pass. Enjoying the last bits of view here in the mountains. I hope this is this is not the end of the riding season yet. And uh, as soon as I will get my ready to fun, I'll swap it out and I'll be riding some more. Or maybe even while I'm waiting because it's uh, 
for those of you that are interested about the progress of riding with no cooling fan, uh, just a heads up that uh, I'm keeping an eye on the uh, temperature and the temperature is fine uh, all the time with just the one cooling fan. So the other fan is good to have of course because it's meant to be there but at the same time it does not uh, interfere performance of the motorcycle really unless you go on a heavy off-road in a extreme heat and pushing the light the bike uh, pretty hard other than that it's uh, yeah I've been riding here since uh, Idaho this is a nice tracker he's letting me in so I'll see how long it's gonna take me to get to uh, Okotox because that's where I want to pick up my keys for my truck and it's kind of hard to predict uh, what to take with you what kind of uh, riding gear because uh, normally you would expect in the mountains to be cold but uh, for us uh, even on Idaho VDR we were hitting uh, plus, 30, plus 36 degrees Celsius but this trip overall it was a blast as any other one we really have a nice group of friends that uh, we go together and we help each other on the road as well uh, we have a good laugh at each other as well time to time we know each other for such a long time that uh, we can just do that right so you're probably hearing us talking polish most of the time uh, on a comm system but uh, whenever I have something to say I'll switch over to English and uh, that's how we keep this channel running quite a few people bump into us uh, down in the US uh, at the campgrounds and they ask about our travels and the American people are really nice, uh, they are helpful and uh, they want to know how it is on the road uh, on adventure motorcycle and especially the way we do it, uh, we're not using too often hotel, we only took one night at the hotel so we're staying mostly at the tent in the campground or just in the, in the boonies uh, in the tent we don't need much as we are self-contained uh, for food and everything uh, we usually stock the food once a day in the evening and uh, that's where we have food for the day uh, for, the, for the night and uh, morning breakfast at the same time we try to keep uh, a little bit of food just in case of crap hits the fan and we are stuck somewhere so you know you can survive a couple more days like a beef jerky, a couple of canned soup and so on we had to, we had to cut the strip shorter because of the troubles that we had with our bikes and my bike is still not fixed which is not a big deal in the evening we always have a drink or two before we go to bed or a couple of beers chit chat and like we did on that uh, Tashanta river in uh, Oregon with uh, those couple that joined us uh, for the evening and then in the morning once they sober out they they wanted to know a little bit more about us and uh, my YouTube channel and so on so I provided the info uh, we met another lady uh, down in the restaurant when we were staying in a hotel at uh, Motel 6 and we went for a pizza and a beer and then uh, later on we went to the store to pick up some uh, food for the next day and that lady I, hey guys i saw you guys there in the store buying the pizza well i saw you guys there in um, in a restaurant and uh, if you guys want you could stay in my resort because she owns a western style resort somewhere in idaho not far from Clarkstone. She gave us the info and she said anytime we want to stop by and uh, have a stay and she wouldn't even charge us. So anyways guys, uh, if you like this video and as well as uh, if you watch all the other ones, don't forget to hit the like button, comment down below and subscribe. That is always very very appreciated and thank you for all my current subscribers for following my channel and uh, being with me on, uh, on this so I'll keep on uh, maybe add on here and there a little bit of footage and I'll see you guys in the next video cheers
go to Alberta. The whole month I've been traveling. I've been in uh, quite a few states actually. Uh, Montana, Idaho, Utah, Nevada, then back to Idaho, then Oregon, Washington, then British Columbia in Canada, and now back to Alberta, the home uh, province. Another um, two hour drive uh, to home. It's quite a bit of traffic because it is a weekend, it is a Saturday I believe. So people are going camping and uh, coming back from work I guess for a, for a couple of days if nobody works uh, away from uh, the city province. 